make sure not to feed your elderberry uh, anything to your goats. They are toxic. Don't eat them yourself. And you're supposed to cook elderberries. All right, with permaculture, I have all this wonderful, wonderful fruit and I don't really have to think about it and I don't have to do a lot of pruning. I just have to come in and, and do things occasionally. One of the things I will do later in the year is come and cut back all the motherwort so that it's not sticking up as dead branches. Some of the best permaculture plants are very prickly. Motherwort is no exception. It's very prickly. It has these little, they kind of look like goat heads, but they're not, um, they're not aggressively thorned. The thorns are soft, very soft, but they're wonderful for the bees. They're wonderful to create a mulch that I cut and drop, love them to pieces. But once we get, once all the leaves drop, I come in and cut down the bush. So um, I've also cut back the elderberries, as you've seen. I need to be able to walk through here. Even though it's permaculture and it's wild, it still needs to be useful to the people that are watering and fertilizing it, right? I feed the ducks that come in and fertilize these plants with their poop. And I pay money to feed those ducks. I need to get something out of these bushes and that means I need to be able to get to them. So I've cut this back so that I have more of a path through here. And I'm gonna go get my black tar goop to show you uh, how to protect your trees once you've cut them back so they're not just drying out. And here, I don't know, can you see it? That's what we got. There was a lot more than that on here, but I just haven't worried about harvesting it. All right. This is a pruning sealer. It does have chemicals in it that you do not want in your children's hands or mouths or anything. Don't eat it. Don't get it on your hands. I really like this one in particular because it has that little wand. The first one I bought was called Tree Guard and it did not have the little wand. I'll see if I can find this on Amazon and put it in the link for you. So I cut these back with my little clippers, with these, but these aren't strong enough to really get it back as far to the base of the tree as it needs to go. I don't like to leave long branches out because kids can run around and poke their eyes pretty good. So, these that I've cut, I'm going to take them back and I'm going to cut this motherwort, even though the bees would love to keep this motherwort, I'm going to cut this particular motherwort so that I'm not getting scratched while I'm trying to work in here. Not everybody's skin is sensitive to this kind of thing. My skin is sensitive to everything. And so even though a lot of people, the motherwort wouldn't bother them, it's a serious irritant to my skin. But that's just because I have very sensitive skin. So I'm just gonna cut these guys back. Especially in a desert climate, it's very important that you seal these guys off. If you don't seal them off, you are going to end up with um, plants that are drying out. There we go. So I've just made that a little bit more bearable for me so that I don't avoid coming out here because I can't walk through. And then I should bring this in a little closer. It doesn't really matter what time of year you cut back dead wood. It does kind of matter what time of year you cut back living wood. 
if that makes sense. So, because these are living wood, I'm gonna give them priority. I'm not gonna put this on the ones that are closer to the ground because those were suckers, not necessarily branches. And this stuff needs to dry. And then once it's dry, you can rub up against it and it's not a big deal. And try really hard not to get it on your camera equipment because it is tar. Try not to get it on your shoes. The big ones are the big deal. The bigger the branch, the more it needs this. However, if you miss one, that branch probably, yes, will die back. But if your forest is healthy enough, it'll just put on new branches. It'll just, it'll just set it back a little bit for a little while. Especially with something like an elderberry, the odds of it seriously damaging it are pretty slim. Again, let it dry before you let your animals out to have access to it like dogs. Since they're attracted to new things and new smells, they might get it on them and you don't want them to do that. So there we go. Easy as pie. I did get a little bit on my hand, so I need to go wipe that off. Are you a collector? Can you see it pretty good? <laughs> you don't want the stems in, the stems are toxic. So you want to make sure you're just getting the berries. I didn't take off the dry ones. I just left those on. A little bit goes a long, long way. Now I'm going to put a lid on this and let the water in the bottom of the pan steam the fruit. All right, you have to make sure not to overheat it. Even though with the water in the bottom, it boiled over very, very quickly. Like in two seconds, it boiled over. Which is really sad because now I have elderberry all over the oven. But, um, it's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add honey to this. And then I'm going to strain it and put it in a jar in the fridge. Okay, so I have a sieve to catch the seeds. It is now a honey and elderberry mixture. Alright, there we go. Two pints plus... I'd say at least another pint that spilled over on the stove. Homesteading and cooking are not perfect. Sometimes you get distracted cleaning the kitchen and the pot boils over after only being on for two seconds. Sometimes it happens. So the pulp, because it's been cooked, it's now edible, goes to pigs. There we go. All right, a huge thank you to Tiffany and Tim they donated half a ton of hay to our farm, which this year, any any year, that's amazing. This year in particular for our homestead, it's a lifesaver. The goats are going to be so appreciative. The sheep will be appreciative. The rabbits will be appreciative. Um, John and the girls were able to go see their homestead, said it was beautiful. Um, I was resting up yesterday in order to be able to unload it today, so I didn't go. But um, it hasn't been sprayed with anything. It's so nice to have friends and other farmers in our area. So thanks for all of you who contribute to our homestead. We'll talk to you later.